After watching The Dark Knight this week for the second time, my wife Fran turned to me afterwards and said, I don't think you can use any video clips from that film on Sunday. And part of me went, I think she's right. The good versus evil battle in this very intense film was so graphic and so in your faces and so dark, which was why it was such a good movie, right, and such a big hit, and was so effective in making its point. It was more intense in terms of its exposure of human nature. That's where the Dark Knight was extremely graphic and acted in a way like a mirror. And it shone the light onto, I mean, it's a comic book story, right? It's Batman and the Joker. Yet it shone the light onto us and who we are as human beings and revealed hidden truth about a reality we'd rather ignore. And in a way, the film ripped our masks off. After we watched the film together, my daughter was there with a friend, and we were sort of debriefing, what makes this such a good movie? And everybody jumped in a bit, and then I said, you know what I think it is? It, it's a film that takes our mythical ideas of good and evil as though they're separate things, totally separate from one another. And I'm hearing Alexander Solzhenitsyn whisper in my ear, were we to live in a world where good people were wholly good and evil people were wholly evil, and we could just separate the two and have good destroy evil, then that would be a great world. But the line dividing good and evil runs down the middle of each and every one of our hearts, and who's willing to destroy his own heart? And I'm thinking this film takes the myth, our myth, of good is completely good and evil is completely evil, and it mixes it and turns it into this chaotic, upside down, not so black and white, increasingly gray, inextricably mixed reality. And that unearths us and unsettles us very graphically. And as we vicariously engage the truth of that film, we are vicariously engaging the truth, or maybe more intimate than that, engaging the truth inside of us. Two-Face is a very effective microcosm of the whole story, the whole film, but also a very effective picture of you and me. Both good and evil in one being, in you, in me, even in St. Paul, who wrote, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Not I was the worst after his conversion. The, the, the epistle writing, Bible writing Apostle Paul says, of whom I am the worst. The dark night hits us with St. Paul's truth. So is Batman the hero? God's lesson to us that we're resonating with, this idea of a selfless, sacrificial Savior, a type for Christ? Or is there someone else? Or is there an even, an even bigger hero in the film? What I very much think is an unseen hero. And I'd argue that there is. That that hero mysteriously veils his face in a very powerful way and works in very mysterious behind-the-scenes kinds of moments, like some kind of invisible hand 
holding everything, keeping it all, maintaining some semblance of order in the chaos. The Joker has set up a social experiment. Good people in one boat, bad people in another boat, and they've each been given a detonator to a bomb that exists in the other boat. And they've got up until 12 o'clock to press the button and blow up all the people in the other boat. This is his social experiment, the Jokers, to show that we're all evil and we're all broken. And so the crooks have a trigger that they can flip the switch, turn the key, and blow up all the good people. And all the good people have a detonator that they can use to blow up all the bad people, the bad people who've already made bad choices. They're evil. They're wholly evil. They're terrible. Why shouldn't we? And so there's these scene after scene after scene of these people just going through the machinations of trying to decide, what do we do? How do we handle this? And to keep the fuse even burning quicker, the Joker said, if nobody flips the switches by 12, I'll blow up both boats. Give it to me. You can tell them I took it by force. Give it to me. And I'll do what you should have did 10 minutes ago. We really should stop this fighting. Otherwise, we'll miss the fireworks. There won't be any fireworks. And here we go. trying to prove that deep down everyone's as ugly as you you're alone come on every stereotype in your mind if you watch that film must have been tuned on that evil crooked eye prisoner knowing what he was going to do right what a surprise that the evil one was good and thinking more and more about the nature of our human beings, what a surprise that the good one in the other boat wasn't evil. What caused that to happen? Batman said that this city just showed you that it is full of people willing to believe in good. Who's good? Where are they putting their faith? Where's it coming from? that goodness. The character Rachel said to Dent, you don't leave things like this to chance, do you? The only morality in a cruel world is chance, said Dent. Is it? Or is there a bigger, silent, redeeming, loving, strong, omniscient, all-powerful morality. One with a name, one who is not wearing a mask, one who did show his face. And Jesus was good, the only hero the only one speaking the truth, the only one who hasn't been bought or turned or lives in the gray reality that we all live in, and the only one who can step into that inextricably woven, interwoven mess and pull us out. <laughs> 